Greetings, explorers, or perhaps I should say investigators. If you have ever played the game Clue, or if you have ever participated in LARP live action roleplay, you might find this video very fascinating. We will be making a candlestick holder made out of foam to use in LARP in the game Clue. Right now you see us making some uh, risers that we are going to be using during the molding process. So today we are going to be uh, making a mold of a candlestick and then on our next video we will be pouring foam into that mold and reproducing it. These here are uh, some fancy pins that we will be using to align the mold. Uh, you'll be able to see how they work a little bit later in the video. We do most of our own 3D design and then we have multiple 3D printers. These both, uh, the first one you saw and this one, they're both Anycubics. These pins, when we make them, <clears throat> they have to be a little taller than halfway so that when we go to pour the mold, we'll be wanting the little tips of them, the points, to be just above the uh, poured silicon mold line. So now we're going to give it a little quick test. We'll show you how all this works. So this is a fancy little mold box where you can make different sized boxes in case you have to make different assorted size items. It's really important that when you go to mold, um, silicon can be very expensive. So you want that mold to be big enough to hold the thing you are casting as well as um, strong enough that it will actually hold the mold. You saw there that we are using uh, different cleaners. Uh, that first cleaner, if you wanted to use Goo Be Gone, you could use that as well. Uh, not to be confused with Goof Off, which is a much stronger caustic cleaner. You don't want to use that one, but Goo Be Gone also works. Whenever we go to do this, there's going to be a lot of figuring out. We want to make sure that we use just enough silicon, and then we also need to know exactly how big things are so that when we pour it, we know how much silicon to make. So you'll see there's two different size risers. Uh, that's because the base is four inches and the top is four and a quarter inches. So one of the risers has to be a quarter of an inch shorter than the others. These boxes are really awesome. The way they design them, it makes them completely adjustable. There we go, perfect. <clears throat> when we go to pour the mold in the next video, we'll be pouring uh, into the bottom, so the mold will be, uh, the candlestick will be standing on its head. When we go to, go to, go to pour this, we want it to be as square as possible because in the next video you're going to see us actually create a wood box that goes around this to help reinforce it and protect the mold. We want to be able to use this mold over and over again to make as many candlesticks as we can. There we go. So right now we are getting the actual mold all set up. So there it is all framed out and measured. Then now we have to put clamps to mount it down onto the actual board so that it doesn't shift around while we're making our uh, casting here. So we're going to put some clamps down on each of the beams, pinching it down in place. It's important to take your time uh, using the clay we are going to kind of fill in any place where there might be gaps. This is pretty easy to do. Just takes a little bit of time and it's always time well spent. 
to do it right, so it's always good to do it the right way. Whenever you get a, a leak at the bottom, it's kind of a bummer because then you have to use more of the silicon. So we're gonna get this all sealed off. There you go. Sulfur clay's a little hard, so it does take a little bit of working in as you're doing it. But once you get it warmed up a little bit, it's uh, pretty pliable. Okay, nice and easy, almost done. Perfect. <clears throat> now here's the tough part, figuring out the volume. So we are gonna measure the actual box. It's about a six and an eighth. The box is actually six inches tall but we're only gonna have to pour about five and a half inches. We don't wanna pour all the way to the top. Then you can see the length of the box there is 13 and three quarters. So here's the magic number. You'll see as you read that, it's uh, the magic number is 231, 231. That is how many cubic inches are in a gallon. So, so long as you remember that, you can determine the volume of everything. So this bucket currently has five and a quarter gallons in it just by measuring the width of the bucket, turning that width into the radius, so halving it, squaring that, multiply by pi, then you multiply by the height. Then when you put the candlestick in, you see how much, how high the water level gets raised. So then you redo that math and see how much water was in the bucket then, and then you subtract the two. Now this is a fun thing because this is actually an old story called Eureka. So if you ever have a chance, research the story Eureka. When they're weighing the king's crown to see if someone stole gems, by ch checking that water level you can see if any of the gems were stolen. So if the water level is lower, surprise. So we've done our little math. Now we know how much volume we're gonna be pouring. It's interesting that that wood box was about two gallons. We're gonna also have to remember the volume of the candlestick holder uh, for the next video when we actually go to pour the foam. It's gonna be a very important number. All right, so now we're doing the actual setup. We're gonna place these out to give us a starting point to make sure we got things in the right place. Then we're gonna grab our alignment pins. We're gonna put a little clay at the bottom of each of these, kind of hold them in place. We want them to kind of stick there because when we go to pour the silicone, the silicone, we do not want those pins to move. So we're just gonna tack them down just a little bit. Does not take very much, real easy to do. There you go. So now we gotta tack these guys down a little bit too so they don't move. The little riser pins. And release is really important. So you gotta spray this stuff in here. You're, we're gonna use a different type when we go to do the foam, but when you're working with silicon and smooth surfaces, we're gonna use the 2500 to do this. And then we're gonna want that silicone when we pour it we're going to want it to be able to pull off of the item we're casting as well so we don't want it to stick to that so we're going to give that a good spray down wonderful put that in place <clears throat> oh man i think we are ready to go so the silicone we're using is uh the mold max 29 nv we're using this type here so um Sometimes when you pour silicon, if like we, you saw that we're using a sulfur-free clay, uh, sometimes uh, 3D printers will have a little bit of sulfur in their resin mix. So the type of silicone we're using uh, does uh, not react with sulfur. So we didn't really have to use the type of clay that we did, but uh, it's what we use all the time just to be on the safe side. But as we go to mix this, uh, this should have uh, no reaction to any of the pieces that we have in this mold.
And so it's a 10 to one measurement. So whenever you see us like we have a 400 uh, grams of the part A, that means we have to have 40 grams of the part B. So 400 versus 40. So it's 10 to one. And so you mix these two together and they'll work together and that'll be basically your catalyst, a hardening agent to help harden up the silicone. <clears throat> You'll see that we're using smaller cups right now. Uh, I kind of have to do a precision pour putting this one together. There's other ways to do this, but uh, this seemed easy enough. And it's uh, not an overly complicated uh, thing that we're casting, so the candlestick's pretty pretty simple. So I just have to be careful where I pour it. I don't want to pour it on the pins. I don't want to pour it on the actual candlestick. So I have to be careful. So I'm using smaller cups, which means I have to mix several, several cups in order to do the filling process. But the, uh, the actual uh, work time with the silicone, um, you got lots of time to do this. So it's usually about 40 to 50 minutes and this won't take me more than about 10 minutes to do. So it doesn't matter that I use multiple cups, totally okay to do that. <clears throat> We're near the end of the first pour. Once we finish this section, we're gonna leave the, see how the little pins, the tips of them are just sticking out enough uh, out of the silicone. So that'll be perfect. So uh, we only have to let it cure for six hours. I usually wait a day or two. And now we're on the next step. We're gonna respray down everything. This will make sure that when we go to pour the next half that it won't stick to anything pretty easy they won't stick to each other pretty straightforward but this time I won't have to use smaller cups so I'm just going to use a larger bucket it'll still take about one and a half buckets to do the uh, finishing of the uh, pouring process <clears throat> As I get this bucket filled, there's kind of a glare on the scale. I'm gonna bring that weight up to 2,171. Oh, hey, did you see that spoon there? So every, if you ever need a really good spoon for uh, scraping a bucket when you're doing this process, that is actually a rice serving spoon, a rice serving spoon. Uh, but what an ideal tool. So we'll get this up to 2,171, and then we'll do the uh, Part B, and that Part B will probably, we'll do it at 218. And then we'll mix those two together. Here's Part B. You'll see that I push a little red button on that scale every time I go to add the different ingredients. What that does is when I put that beaker down on top of that scale, that beaker has weight. But by hitting that red button on the scale, it does what's called a tear. And it basically sets the weight at zero based upon the cup weight. So that when you add that cup, it's gonna make everything zero. So that as I pour something into that cup, it's only gonna be weighing the stuff that I pour into it. That way I can get a good accurate measurement. And that goes with all the different mixes that I've done. I always hit that little tear button and then I get an exact weight of the stuff I'm working with. So here's something funny. You'll see the thing that I'm stirring with right now. So that's actually a, a, a stirring drill bit. So if I was to turn it over and put it on a drill I can just turn on my drill and it would mix my ingredients for me. The problem is, is I'm trying to keep uh, as few bubbles as I can from getting into the mixture right now. So when you're working with the silicone, you want as little air 
getting into the mix as you can. So I am not using the drill end of that. Um, we probably will be using that on the next one when we work with the foam because you do want air to get into the foam that we'll be using. So the more air the better. But it just happened to be a nice sturdy stir stick. And it worked out pretty good. But I'm going to scrape all the edges. I'm going to get all the stuff at the bottom. I'm going to keep mixing until there's a nice smooth yellow tone to it. I kind of rotate the bucket as I go and you just keep stirring it. The mixing process on the big bucket, this probably took me seven, eight minutes to mix really well. It took a little bit of time. I probably should have put a little less in this, the first bucket and evened it out, but got it all mixed up. And then this part here, now traditionally when you pour, you're gonna pour from a higher distance and you're gonna pour slower. I poured this one fast and by pouring it fast, I just put a bunch of air bubbles into the mix. Can you see in the, uh, the top of that, that the liquid silicone, you can see there's a lot of bubbles. But I'm gonna show you a way that we resolve this. There's one way to do this where uh, you can do a thing called degassing, where you put your your setup into a uh, vacuum chamber and all the bubbles come up out of it. In this case, I'm just gonna do a couple quick pours. We're gonna scrape that thing clear. You can see I didn't go all the way up to the edge. I got really close, so about five and a half, five and five eighths of a pour there. The box is six inches deep total. So that measurement was just right. We didn't have hardly any waste and that's good. That is very good. All right, so here's our bubble thing. How are we gonna get rid of bubbles? Ta-da! I am actually gonna use a vibration machine. So vibration will shake bubbles loose from the uh, item being molded inside there and any other uh, bubbles that are inside the silicone. And it makes all the bubbles come to the top. And we'll leave that vibration thing on there for about, I don't know, about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. So here we are a day later. We're ready to take the mold apart. Very exciting. <clears throat> Looks pretty good. There you go. When you're pouring these molds too, it's it's really important too to make sure your, your work table is level. So uh, I did all this before I actually did the pouring process to make sure everything I was working with was level. And you can tell it's pretty level as you're looking at the uh, silicone fill up and you can see the pins are about the same height and things like that so you know you're doing okay. So here's something cool. Um, I've only had to buy clay once in my life. You can totally reuse the clay so if you ever get this uh, the uh, sulfur free clay uh, a little more expensive but uh, yeah you just reuse it over and over and over again. I had a pretty good sized brick of it and uh, I probably still have most of it so I'll peel all that off and add it right back to my brick. So there's the mold. Now we're gonna free it off the uh, table there. And if all goes well, that thing will be pretty much perfectly divided in half. And I'm trying not to uh, tear anything or break anything. And uh, one of the tricky parts was this is where the, the candle holder, uh, the original candle holder had a place to put the candle. And I was really hoping to get enough spray into that hole. And uh, so I really did spray it down a lot, but I had a feeling that it was gonna be a, a hard case. And uh, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of modifying on that part. But this is where we're gonna be actually pouring our foam into so this is where the foam will be poured into. And I 
And you can see there's the pins. Got to get that mold free. Going to pull that candlestick free. I'm trying to see if I can get that hole to loosen up and give way. <clears throat> it uh, decided not to. So plan B, it's fine. What awesome silicone, that stuff's really strong. Very happy with it. So there it is. Perfect, perfect. See how the little pins bring it together? We're gonna separate the two pieces. Probably didn't need to, but I wanted to. There we go, perfect. Looks good, so far it looks good. So we're gonna show you the mold. There's the candlestick we are copying. Look at that fancy mold. Fantastic, those pieces will go together. And there it is. Good wood detail, you can see all the grain. Fantastic job. And those little pins will help keep my mold aligned when we go to do the next step. Outstanding. Well done. Be sure to watch part two. That should be coming out shortly. We have already filmed half of it. So we can't wait to put it together. Thank you so much.